Hey guys, welcome back to Cruise Blog. It's Allie, and today I'm going to be sharing 15 things that you should never do in your cruise ship cabin. Let's get into it. Cruises are a time to kick back, relax, and to not think about your day-to-day -day responsibilities. Even so, there are some rules on board, both explicit and implied, that you should follow while on board your cruise ship. You should not, for instance, smoke in areas that are not designated for smoking or engage in any unruly or disruptive behavior. But when it comes to your stateroom, while it does feel like you're home away from home for the duration of a cruise, there are some things that you should refrain from doing in your cabin. Some are against the cruise line's rules and others are simply a courtesy to those who are around your room. Number one is smoke or vape. While you may smoke on most cruise ships, you can only do so in designated areas. These areas will vary from cruise line to cruise line, so it's important to ask guest services as soon as you board if you are unable to locate the smoking places yourself. You should know though that smoking is prohibited in most public places as well as inside your stateroom, and that's even if you have a balcony. Not only is this a huge fire hazard to use a lighter and have an open flame around, but the smell of the smoke can disturb others. If you're caught smoking inside your stateroom, including your balcony, you'll be billed a fine to your onboard account. Carnival Cruise Line, for instance, will assess a $500 bill per violation. Next, lighting a candle. Do you have a favorite candle that you like to burn at home? Well, that's great, but unfortunately, you'll need to leave it behind on your cruise. Cruise ships do not allow candles or incense on board. A single open flame can turn into a ship-wide disaster in just a few seconds. You also cannot bring wall plug-ins that heat and vaporize oil. If you're worried about unpleasant odors in your stateroom, consider bringing along some poopery of your favorite aerosol air freshener. Number three, use adhesives to stick things to the walls or doors. A favorite cruising tradition for many is decorating stateroom doors. This, however, has to be done using magnets rather than stickers or anything that's adhesive. The same goes for inside your cabin too. If the cruise line finds out that you've been damaging the cabin, you will be billed accordingly. For example, Disney Cruise Line states that you cannot affix items to your stateroom doors using tape or any adhesive, including removable gel adhesives, as this can damage the door's finish. Also, using over-the-top hanging organizers is prohibited, as they can scratch and or disfigure stateroom doors and trim. Those who violate Disney Cruise Line's policies will be charged a $100 fee to cover the cost of repairs to their staterooms. Number four, being rude to your stateroom attendant. On the first day of your cruise, you're likely to be greeted by your stateroom attendant, who is the person responsible for making sure that your stateroom is clean and tidy for the duration of your sailing. They'll do things like refresh your towels, make your bed, empty the trash can, deliver disembarkation information, and more. In the event that an issue with your attendant does arise, you should head to guest services who will help you figure out the best solution. What you should not do is be rude to your cabin attendant. Their goal is to make your time on board, especially inside your cabin, as comfortable as they can be. And I can honestly say in all of my years of cruising, I have never had a bad stateroom attendant. I have only had wonderful stateroom attendants. Next, leave a mess for your stateroom attendant. Speaking of your stateroom attendant, it's not polite to leave a mess for them. While their job is to tidy up your cabin, you don't want to leave plates and dishes everywhere. Instead, set these outside of your cabin. And while it may seem unconventional, this is very normal on cruise ships. Plus, you don't want to return to a disorganized cabin when you're in the mood to relax. Try and come up with a system with your cabin mate that ensures that your cabin never looks like a tornado blew through it. Number six, blast music from a portable speaker, especially early in the morning or late at night. It's no surprise that cruise ship quarters are smaller and tighter than regular staterooms. This means that you'll need to be extra courteous to those around you. You never know if someone in an adjacent cabin is a late riser or likes to retire early at night. For that reason, you should refrain from playing music too loud and keeping your voice at an inside volume. There is no reason to be yelling at someone in your stateroom because they are never too far away. Since it's also considered rude to play your own music too loud on the pool deck, you should probably leave your portable speaker at home. Unless that is, you really do plan on using it at a respectful volume in your stateroom only. Number seven, using an iron steamer. Most likely you'll not even be able to bring these on board as they will be confiscated during your embarkation process. If though they make it through for some reason, you still should not use them on board. There is a reason that they are not allowed on cruise ships and you should respect those policies. Just like candles, these items are considered a fire hazard. If you're worried about your clothes getting wrinkly, don't worry, there are a few solutions. First, you can hang them in the bathroom while you shower. This is typically my go-to and I find that it gets the majority of my wrinkles out. Second, wrinkle release spray does exist 
These sprays work by relaxing the article's fibers so that you are able to smooth out any wrinkles. And finally, you can always pay for onboard laundry services, although they tend to be a little bit pricey. And honestly, everybody's clothes are wrinkly and no one really cares. Next, take the towels or robes at the end of the cruise. Unlike hotels, there won't be mini toiletries for you to stash in your luggage the night before leaving. In fact, there really is not anything that you should be taking from your cabin. After you disembark the ship, your cabin attendant will check to see if you have taken anything. This includes towels, robes, if there were any, hair dryers, and more. And you don't want to get a bill for taking these items. Similarly, make sure that you return all pool towels on the last night of your cruise. Some cruise lines like Royal Caribbean will charge your onboard account $25 per towel, even if they are just left in your cabin by accident. And I can vouch for this because this recently happened on my Iceland cruise. We were charged $50 for two towels and it involved me going to guest services and disputing it and then again disputing it when I got home. So just return them as you should. Another tip is to not flush things other than toilet paper down the toilet. Cruise ship plumbing systems are different than those we're used to on land. Toilets, however, can still get clogged. Since your plumbing system is interlinked with those of other cabins, if you back up your own toilet, it's likely to cause issues for other passengers too. Only flush the toilet paper provided by the cruise line. This means properly disposing of things like feminine hygiene products and baby wipes. While the provided toilet paper might not be the three ply that you're used to at home, it is meant to be able to easily pass through the pipes without clogging anything up by dissolving relatively quickly. I hate the single ply sandpaper as much as anybody, but please continue to use it. Next is walking around naked with the curtains open. If you're at sea, there is less of a concern about this. However, if you're docked in port, please always cover yourself up before stepping out of the bathroom, especially if your curtains are open. If another ship has pulled in beside you, you never know who will be able to look directly inside of your room. There is less privacy than you think, and those ships are not as far apart as you might think. Even if you're staying in an ocean view room with no balcony, please consider this. Next, do not use power cords that don't have surge protectors. Newer ships come equipped with more charging options, whether it's just more outlets, USB ports, or even wireless charging that are built into the vanity. But older ships usually have limited options with just maybe one or two American ports. If you're sailing on a cruise ship, specifically an older one, it might be tempting to bring a power cord from home to give you more outlets to charge your devices. This, however, is frowned upon by many mainstream cruise lines. With regular power strips, there's a chance that the surge protector will overload the circuit and start a fire. And a fire on a cruise ship is the greatest danger of all, so cruise ships ban surge protector power strips. Instead, look into either buying a European power adapter or cruise line approved power strips that do not have surge protectors. Next, do not throw anything off of your balcony. If you're staying in a balcony cabin, you'll need to be mindful of your behavior on your balcony. Not to say that you can't enjoy the space that you've paid for, but there are certainly some things not to do while you're staying in a balcony cabin. First, you should never throw anything off of your balcony. Cruise ships have a strict rule about throwing things into the ocean as they have a commitment to protect the marine environment in which they operate. Anything can disturb this, even if you have the best intentions. And you should also not hang items wet or dry on your balcony's railing. The fresh ocean breeze seems like a great place to air out your clothing, right? Well, it's wrong. Balcony railings should never have anything draped over them, whether it's a wet towel, a swimsuit, or anything of the like. It's easy for those things to blow off and land in the ocean. Plus, if it's a towel, you will likely be charged for losing it at the end of the cruise. Instead, use the clothing wire that's available in many cruise ship bathrooms. This way, you'll be able to safely dry your articles without the fear of them blowing away. Another thing not to do is to jump off your stateroom's balcony. While it might go without saying, jumping off your balcony is a foolish thing to do and you should also avoid climbing on your balcony's railing for any reason, including taking what you might think is that perfect photo. In fact, there have been people who are banned from cruising who have been caught doing things like this. You'll still be able to get your perfect photo with the ocean in sight and for those who have been itching to get in the water, find a beach when your ship is safely docked in port. And our last thing that you should not do in your cabin is leaving the balcony door open. Attached to or near your balcony door will be a sign asking you to please keep the door closed. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, it creates a tunnel of wind if your stateroom door is open from the hallway. Plus, it overworks the air conditioning system in your cabin by releasing all of the cool air. In some cruise ships, the AC is programmed to automatically turn off when the door is open, which is meant to prompt you to close it. Also, you could have some unwanted bird guests in your cabin if you 
you leave your door open and unattended. All right, everybody, those are our 15 things that you should never do in your cruise cabin. Comment below if you have any other additional things that we missed in our list. Be sure to like and subscribe to Cruise Blog so you can be notified every time we have a new video. Until next time, everybody, happy cruising.